It's Sunday service by New Heights, and the word of God is on deck. Go ahead and hit that share button. Do it now, because New Heights Live starts right now. It's time you've been cleared for takeoff. It's time to ascend to New Heights. Let the church say man once again. Let the church say man once again. Uh, we are jumping into our new series on this morning. So uh, we're just grateful to be here uh, on this morning. We, th we thank God once again for bringing you in. And thank for those of you joining us on social media. Welcome in uh, on this morning. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. We're glad uh, that God has brought you uh, to this place even on this morning uh, to be a part of our worship assembly uh, here at the New Heights Church. Proverbs chapter number six, Proverbs chapter six, uh, Proverbs chapter six on uh, this morning, we're going to, uh, we got two different uh, texts on this morning, so uh, we're going to move rather rapidly into this, but we're going to launch from Proverbs chapter number six uh, on today. Uh, prayerfully, we're going to bless you this month with a word uh, from the Lord. Uh, Proverbs chapter six, we're going to rendezvous at verse number six. We're going to run with verse number six, and we'll divorce the text at verse uh, number, uh, verse number, uh, verse number nine. Amen. Verse number nine. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs chapter number six. Verse number six. Uh, through nine. Then we're going to go over to Proverbs chapter 27. We're going to go over to Proverbs 27. Uh, and we're going to extrapolate uh, a thought from that particular passage as well. Proverbs chapter 6 and Proverbs chapter uh, 20, uh, 27. Amen. Uh, you're going to need to increase. Uh, you're going to need to increase uh, to 75, please. Thank you. Uh, Proverbs chapter number six. If you have it, say, I got it, or type, I got it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Amen. Amen. We ask you, whoever you are, wherever you are, to go ahead and stay in, in the honor of reading God's word. Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs chapter 6. The Bible says these words. Go to the ant, you lazy one. Observe its ways and be wise. With having no chief, officer, or ruler. Prepares its food in the summer and gathers its provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, you lazy one? I read it again. Go to the ant, you lazy one. Verse number six. Observe its ways and be wise. Which having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares its food in the summer, gathers its harvest in the winter. How long will you lie down, lazy one? The Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. The verse number one. Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. In verse number one, the Bible says this. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring. Do not boast about tomorrow, for, do you, for you do not know what the day may bring. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
We call on you this hour as humbly as we know how, Father God, thanking you for another day's journey, and we're glad about it. Realizing, oh, Father, that you didn't have to bring us to this day, but we're sure glad that you did. Father, we know that today was not promised to us, but because you are a loving and a merciful God, you brought us yet to one more day. For that, Father, we say thank you. We shout hallelujah. We glorify your name. We pause now to pray for this servant. We ask you now, God, to empty me of myself and fill me with your spirit. That at the end of this hour, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Open up now my mouth, that my mouth will show forth our eternal praise without adding to or taking from that which is written in Holy Scripture. Quicken us now in your word, O oh God. Make us better right now, O oh God that we may be able to, to be better when we leave this place than when we enter in. But we realize that you are a loving God, that you love us too much to hurt us, and you're too wise that you will never do us wrong. This is your humble servant's prayer. In the matches, the potent, and the powerful name of Jesus, we humbly pray that all of my father's children shout and exclaim. Amen and amen. Turn to somebody and say, neighbor. Oh, come on. High five. Somebody say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I can't wait any longer. I've been waiting for a long time. Amen. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor. I can't wait any longer. I've been waiting a long time. Amen. Be seated. Be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Be seated in the presence of Almighty God. We realize that time is fastly ticking away. And because time is ticking away, we have to make use of the time that we have. And if we don't make use of the time that we have, somebody says that we wasted time. According to the American Psychological Association, they say that a vast number of people like to waste time. A vast number of people like to put things off for a later time. Many times, beloved, we will, we will say, I'm too tired to start today. I will do it tomorrow when I get more energy. I can't concentrate as well as I should right now, so I need to take a, a mental break and I'll get to it later. Or I don't feel motivated to start right now. I will wait until I feel more inspired and then I will get started. Have any of us ever used these excuses? We say, I still have so much time to get it done. I don't have to start right now. Are you like me and, and you always late because you always think you have more time than you actually do? We sometimes say, I only have 10 minutes and I will not achieve enough in this time. I don't, I don't have enough time to start. So if I'm not going to be able to really devote time to this right now, I'll do it later. I cannot focus if I, ha if I, if I have uh, this time pressure and this time constraint, I'll start tomorrow when my schedule is less busy. Sometimes we say it's too late to start now. It's too late in the evening. Sometimes we will say, I have to relax a little bit before I can do it, so let me take a break. I can't do it on an empty stomach, so let me cook and eat first, and, and then I'll start. And then after, after we eat and, and we get full, beloved, we, we sometimes just lie down because we can't start on a full stomach. We can't start on an empty stomach. We can't start on a full stomach, so we never start doing the thing. 
Beloved, it is difficult to navigate these types of paradigms and begin to uh, to navigate these types of excuses because as human beings, we have the proclivity, we have the uh, proclivity to believe that we have more time than we actually have. Because we don't see time as a, as a relative thing until we look at the clock. Sometimes, beloved, it does not register in our uh, a cerebral cortex that we are not going to be able to delay progression any further. We delay time, but yet we try to delay the process of doing things on the time that it is allotted for. Beloved, as, as we get into... Uh, October and we launch into the last quarter of this year. I cannot believe I'm saying that this is the last quarter of 2023. And beloved, as we as we get into this particular uh, span of time, the last part of this year that we know of 2023, beloved, we are some of us are still trying to get started with things that we said we were going to get started with at the beginning of the year. Beloved, I want us to finish strong because we haven't started strong. I, I want us, it's not how you start the game, it's how you finish the game. And if we made decisions and commitments to get things done in this year and God has still blessed us with time, beloved, get started now. This month, beloved, I want to talk to us from the sermon series, the Someone Next series entitled Due Date. Come on, can you tap somebody? Can you, can you touch somebody? Can you high-five somebody, air-five somebody and say, neighbor, there has a due date. Uh, there is a due date. We're waiting on a tech team back there. Amen. Uh, neighbor, 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 neighbor. There is a due date. We, we've been putting this off far too long. Here on last week, I would like to ask you to continue to pray for uh, the Edwards family just on last Sunday. 51 years old, one of our kindergarten teachers at the school suddenly passed away. And beloved, if that does not put into perspective that people are leaving here every single day without illness, without sickness, without without some type of ailment that they've been fighting. Beloved, cancer is not taking everybody out. Say amen when you can. I, I need to tell you that, that we have to begin to redeem the time that we have. The Bible teaches us that, that we must redeem the time that because, because the time is, is slowly slipping away from us. Time is going to one day be no more. And then, beloved, we're going to find ourselves in eternity. Procrastination rates are at the highest they've ever been. People spend, statistics show, people spend an hour to two hours a day procrastinating. We spend an hour to two hours, actually it's about an hour and a half to two hours a day. An hour and 59 minutes a day on average, we spend it procrastinating. And beloved, as we look into this particular series, I, I could not help but go to uh, to Proverbs and to really get, gain and glean from uh, Proverbs chapter number six, because because in Proverbs chapter six, beloved, we see that that the Bible is is very, very adamant and very clear about how we make use of our time. Beloved, sometimes we don't understand that we have to give an account for time. Did you hear what I just said? We have to be stewards of the time that God has given us. If I waste time, then I'm not going to please God. Because God is going to say to me, you are slothful servant. In this particular passage of scripture, Proverbs chapter number six, the proverbial writer is getting us to understand that procrastination is like a robber. It's like a thief. It comes to steal away our opportunities. But many of us have made our friendships with procrastination because, uh, because we, we sometimes don't feel like we're in an adequate space to get these, these particular things done. Or 
our workload is too heavy that we don't have time to do anything else. And am, am I talking to anybody in the room on this morning? If you ain't going to say nothing, I'm going to raise my hand because sometimes I, I, I just don't feel like it. Can I, can I be judgment day honest? Some days I just want to come home and I want to sit on my sofa and I want to do nothing because I went to work that day. But those projects that you said you were going to get done are not going to do themselves. Those books that you said you were going to write are not going to write themselves. The, the songs that you said you were going to write, they are not going to write themselves. Beloved, the, the project that you said you were going to work on is not going to finish itself. The, the new career that you want to start in and, and learning about that career is not going to happen until we start. Beloved, I came to tell you that until we begin to maximize our time. We'll always find ourselves struggling that there's not enough time in the day. Here it is in verse number six, Proverbs chapter six. The Bible says, go to the ant, you lazy one. Observe its ways and be wise. Go to the ant, observe his ways, you lazy one, and be wise. This is a part of one of Solomon's lessons and blessings to his students. And one of the first of the wise lessons in this chapter is caring for one's existing wealth. Solomon especially urges his son to avoid financial entanglements by not entering into surety agreements. But when we get further down into this particular text, he's telling uh, his son about wasted opportunities because wasted opportunities, y'all need to look this way because I'm about to drop a bomb in your spirit. Wasted opportunities cannot be made up. Wasted opportunities will not come around again. Wasted opportunities will only get us what we've always had. So children of God, he says, go to the ant. Go to the ant and observe his ways and be wise. Which having no chief or officer or ruler prepares its food in the summer and gather its provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, you lazy one? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then, then your poverty will come like a drifter and your need like an orange man. I came to tell you, children of God, is, is, is in this particular uh, text, in the context of this, uh, Solomon is trying to, Solomon, y'all know, was the wisest man to, to have ever lived. He asked God for wisdom, and God gave him an abundance of wisdom. My beloved, he's talking about the parallel here with an ant. Has anyone ever studied how an ant moves? Has anyone ever studied how ants come together? And they work together to get things done. If we really want to begin to, to, to understand the mind of God, Proverbs is a good place for us to start. Because Proverbs is best understood in the context when we look at the books of Ecclesiastes and the book of Job. In Proverbs, wisdom is given in short, simple, general terms and, and stories and allegories for us to be, begin to be able to uh, analyze this and make application in our day-to-day -day lives. This, this often, in the context of the observation of the text, it shows us how general principles of the book of Proverbs don't apply in absolutely every circumstance, but it represents a lot of our circumstances. So we know that summer is ending. We're coming into the last quarter of this year, and I need to tell you, beloved, that a lot of things that, that we are trying to do has a due date on them. 
a lot of the things that we are trying to accomplish has a due date on them. And I, I need to tell you, if something has been conceived into your spirit, if something has been conceived uh, into your life, into your heart, beloved, it is not going to be birthed until its due date. But in order for it to be birthed, we have to do something uh, until the due date. Children of God, I need us to begin to recognize the fact that we're not getting any younger. That every single day, we're one step closer, the one step closer to leaving this earth. Children of God, in Proverbs chapter 27, the proverbial writer is encouraging us to understand that we don't have tomorrow. We only have today. In Proverbs chapter 27, he's encouraging us to realize that we don't have as much time as we think we have. The Bible says, do not boast about tomorrow. You know, uh, we often like to, to talk about it. We often like to say, you know, I, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I, I, uh, 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 call me tomorrow. Let, let me know tomorrow. Give me answer uh, by tomorrow. We, we talk to about tomorrow a lot and we don't talk about today. Did you hear what I just said? We talk a lot about tomorrow. We talk more about tomorrow than we talk about today. Have you ever realized that? That we do a whole lot of talking about tomorrow? About what we're going to do this week? And we never maximize our potential of the right now. Beloved, I need us to begin to realize and recognize that God wants us to do it now. When you look at the word procrastination, it comes from a two-part word in the Latin, the prefix pro means for. And then crass means tomorrow. To nation makes an it makes it an abstract uh, an abstract noun into something for tomorrow uh the, the 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 ending the suffix uh to nation makes the whole phrase make sense because in if in in reality the 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 two part word is for tomorrow that means we label stuff for tomorrow the act of procrastination is going around now watch this if we use the same energy, I'm, I'm going to be where you want me in a minute. If we use the same energy that we use to label stuff for tomorrow and use the same energy to actually do it today, we will find ourselves much better off when we get to the end of the day. When we get to the end of the week, when we get to the end of the month, we will find ourselves in a much better place. We will see how much we've actually accomplished if we just focus on the time at hand. What I'm trying to tell you is we use a lot of energy to label stuff for the mall. If I went to uh, uh, most, most, if I went to most people who work in an office type setting or work in a cubicle, somewhere on their desk, they will have a pile of work that they put off to tomorrow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But he says, go to the ant, you lazy one. Can I tell you, beloved, is it, is it safe to say that those who procrastinate are, in fact, just a little lazy? Because I'm, I'm trying to talk to someone this morning about, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tie this into the gospel as we move throughout this, this series, because I really want us to understand that, that, that most times people who know that they need to get their lives together, they, they, they keep putting it off till tomorrow. And, and sooner or later, beloved, we're going to be caught outside looking in. I remember talking to people years ago uh, over the course of my, my, my journey and the course of my ministry. I've talked to people and say, you know, oh, it, it's a good time for you to give your life to the Lord. Well, you know, I, I'm just not there yet. I'm not ready. I just need a little bit more time. Beloved, we procrastinate spiritually just as much as we procrastinate physically. We procrastinate spiritually just as much as we procrastinate physically. And because we procrastinate spiritually, sometimes we, 
we like to wait around on that problem that we have with sin too. Sometimes y'all ain't saying nothing to me right through here. Ah, uh, it's about to get tight, but it's so right. I need to tell you that that sometimes in our lives we we know we ought to quit doing that thing, uh, but we we keep saying, well, I'll I'll get it right next time. Uh, but right now I'm going to enjoy this thing. Uh, I'll, I'll get it right tomorrow. I'll I'll get it right next week. Uh, I, I'll get it right next month. But but right now I'm just not there. We make excuses like he ain't through with me yet. Oh, God. We're procrastinating spiritually. Because we feel that we have more time. And beloved, the reason sometimes we procrastinate spiritually, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you on two different wavelengths. Can I, can I do that? Can I, can I talk to you on two different wavelengths? I'm not trying to give you no self-help sermon, but I, I'm, I'm trying to help you help yourself. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I, I, need to under, I need us to understand that, that a lot of times uh, if, we, if we struggle with actually taking a stand in our spiritual life with getting rid of certain habits, certain, certain sin practices that we like to engage in, Beloved, it's because we are lazy. We don't want to do the work. It's hard to let some stuff go. Say man when you can. Uh, uh, say ouch one, one or two, but but say something. You you you, you we got to get to to the place to know that we don't have as much time as we think we have. This year is already almost gone. It's Thanksgiving is next month. Wow, Thanksgiving is next month. Don't boast about tomorrow. For you do not know what tomorrow may bring. Don't boast about tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Crastinate, the word crastinate. You have procrastinate and then you have crastinate. Crastinate describes, watch this. Crastinate describes delaying something. Did y'all hear what I just said? Crastinate describes delaying something. Chris, crastinate describes delaying something. Procrastinate describes delaying something over and over again. Y'all all right? Crastinate means de delaying something. Procrastinate describes a repeated delay of something and beloved it's it's okay for us to put it off once or twice but 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 beloved sometimes we just keep putting that thing back in the cupboard back in the pantry back back in the closet back in the drawer y'all ain't saying nothing to me we keep putting that thing back on the shelf and and we'll get to it eventually tell your neighbor due date it, it has a due date. Uh, beloved, it has a due date. For for the Bible tells us that if we faint not in due season, y'all ain't saying nothing to me right through here, in due season, we will reap if we faint not. I'm preaching better than you shout, and I hope, I hope we're just taking this in, and that's why we're quiet, but, because I really need us to begin to, and this, this, this series is going to get better and better. It's going to get gooder and gooder. Amen. Uh, can, I, can I use gooder and gooder? It makes me feel good. Uh, 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 it's going to get gooder and gooder because we're going to start uh, understanding the tactics of procrastination. One of the things I want to tell you on this morning, when I look at this text, it says, go to the ant. Can I, can I preach the text now? It says, go to the ant, you lazy one. Solomon's saying, listen, I need you to go find somebody who's doing it already. Uh, y'all didn't y'all not ready for me this morning. Solomon says, go find somebody that you can pattern your work ethic behind. Go find somebody who's already doing what you're trying to do. And I want you to find somebody and learn from them. You, you ain't gotta find nobody to learn how to how to procrastinate. Uh, did you hear what I just said? You don't you don't have to find anybody to learn how to procrastinate. You can, just, you can just keep doing what we've always done. One of the hardest things for me as a leader is for everybody to have the same urgency that I have. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I get on somebody's street this morning? 
the, one of the hardest things as a pastor and a leader, and a teacher, is to, is to get everybody to move at, not at my pace, but at an urgent pace. Because watch this, everybody has their own urgent. Oh, God. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody has their own urgent. Say amen. But your urgency is directly correlated to what your belief pattern is. The stuff that we believe in, we take the time to maximize every effort that we put into that thing. So whatever our construct of our belief construct is, that's what we find urgent. Because it is it's married and coupled with our priority. And our priorities are predicated upon what's important to us in the time. Somebody said that procrastination, procrastination is the very thing that activates the creative gene. Because when we wait too long, as we get closer to the due date, now we have to get creative to make sure it gets done. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Okay, let me, let me help you this way. Has anybody ever been to college? Has any, anybody ever had a paper that, that was due? And, and, and when the paper, well, well I, 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 I'll get to it next week. It's not due to, to the week before Thanksgiving. Y'all ain't said nothing to me right through here. Have you ever had a discussion board? Come here, New Heights University. Have you ever had a discussion board and, and, and it's due on Monday and you wait till Monday to get the discussion board done? Or you just say, you know what? I'm going to take, take my time. Bible study ain't till Wednesday. I'll do it Wednesday. Say amen and say out. We put things off, but if we just prioritize a little bit more carefully and more intentionally, beloved, we will be able to get more done. Has it ever bog boggled your mind why very highly effective and successful people get so much done? And they have, they have to watch me. They have the same amount of time that we have. They get, they get so much more done than we do that they have 24 hours in the same day that we have. It's because, beloved, they found someone who they could learn from. That's point number one. Find you somebody that you can learn from. Y'all got that in your spirit? Go to the ant, you lazy one. Go to the one, you unlearned one. Observe its ways and be wise. Having no chief, officer, or ruler. Having no chief, no officer, or ruler. First point, find, find somebody you can learn from. Point number two is get some discipline in your spirit. He says, watch it, having no chief, no officer or ruler, that's discipline. I'll never forget it as long as I live. In the, in the Marine Corps, in basic training, recruit training, one day on the rifle range, we got in trouble. And we used to have these, these brushes, they were, they were boot brushes, they were the brushes that shine your boots. But we had two of them. Chris, you don't know nothing about this because you was in a chair force. But um, um, they had two brush. We had two brushes. One was for our boots. The other one was called a scuzz brush because we were not allowed to use brooms to clean the floor. We would take these brushes. They were boot brushes. And, 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 and come here, cameraman. I want you to get this. Uh, uh, we, we, would, we would take these brushes and we would put these brushes in our hands like such. 
and 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 the 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 drill instructor would say he would say listen uh uh start at the bulkhead and work your way to the middle of the floor so we had to start at the wall we had to start uh, say say this is the center of the squad deck this is the center of of, of the floor of the room we had to start at the wall we had to get down on our knees uh, and we had we our knees could not touch the floor and we had to we had come come on come 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 down cameraman we we had to get down on on, on the on the ground and and we had to duck walk and sweep the floor we had to duck walk y'all ain't saying nothing bring me right through here and sweep the floor and I remember one time we got in trouble. I'm, I'm so glad I still can do this at 40 years old. Blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we had to get down and, and we had to get all the dust and, and all the dirt. And, and if somebody put their knee on the floor, we had to go back and start again. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. When I came to tell you, beloved, that, that we, we got into the middle of the squad deck and, and, and we were in trouble. So we had to stay here knuckle to knuckle with the person that was in front of us and our foreheads had to touch the other person in front of us. And, and beloved, while we were down there on the floor, the drill instructor kept, kept shouting, discipline. And as he said, discipline, while we're still in this knuckle to knuckle with the skull brush in our hand, forehead to forehead, if our heads became disconnected, we had to start over. If our knuckles didn't touch, we had to start over. If we put our knees on the ground, we had to start over. But he told us to, to repeat the definition of discipline. And as long as I live, I'm going to always remember that discipline is instant will and obedience to all orders. Uh, self-reliance uh, and teamwork discipline is uh, self-reliance uh, to all orders discipline is uh, uh, the power to know that I have to do the right thing all the time uh, I have to continue practice doing the thing uh, without having somebody tell me to do discipline is instant willing obedience to practicing all order, self-reliance and teamwork. What I'm trying to, the point I'm making right here, beloved, is he says the ant has no officer, the ant has no ruler, the ant has no chief, but the ruler, the officer, and the chief for the ant is discipline. The reason we can't get things done because we don't have any discipline. The reason we can't let the sin problem go is because we have no discipline. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. I, I, I'm, trying to I'm trying to help us understand right through here, beloved, we, we can't boast about tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. But he says, go to, the, I'm in this text. I'm preaching this text because y'all ain't saying that. He says, go to the ant. <laughs> Amen. You lazy one. Observe it. Wait. Find somebody you can learn from. Install discipline. Point number two is begin to procure discipline. Yes. Number three said he prepares his food in the summer and gathers his provision in the harvest. Number three. Number one, find somebody to learn from. Number two, develop your discipline. Procure your discipline. Install your discipline. Number three, watch it. Do the work. Just do it. Y'all know that? Y'all know that slogan? Have y'all ever heard that before? Just, just do it. Do the work. Because before we know it, summer will be ended. It says prepares its food in the summer. Now, 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 now watch me. I, I got I to pull this out of this text. Fairly, it, 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 it procures its food in the summer. It prepares its food in the summer. What I came to tell you if you can't stay in the heat, then you need to get out the kitchen. The, the ant prepares its food in the hottest portion of the year. What I came to tell you, beloved, is we got to 
stop making excuses uh, because we know we want to eat. We need, we know we're trying to secure the bag, but we want somebody to hand us the bag. Say amen and say ouch. He prepares his food in the sun. But he's not focusing on the heat. Watch it. He's making the best opportunity of the time. Because the summer, the days are the lowest. Did you hear what I just said? The days are the longest. We can stay outside later. We have more daylight in the summer. We can get stuff done if we are in the summer, and I'm not talking about a physical summer season, although summer has ended now and we find ourselves, we're finding ourselves now in fall. What I'm trying to tell you, the summer season of your life is the season you ought to be producing. Did you hear what I just said? You ought to be producing in the summer season of your life. But a lot of us uh, have been stuck in winter for years. We, we've been stuck in winter for years and, and, and we, we, we're trying to figure out why it's so cold in our lives. Why, why, why nothing, is, nothing is on fire. Nothing is heating up. We're not even warm anymore. We're just like a cold bowl of grits. Just stuck and lumpy. Yeah. We just, <laughs> fairly, some of us are just stuck and lumpy. We, have you ever had cold grits? They, they just hard for no reason. We're, the reason some of us are just hard because we've been cold for so long. We've been stuck in winter for too long. We ain't produced anything. That's why I don't listen to most people. Can I be honest? That's, that's why I don't listen to most people. You know why I don't listen to most people? Because they've never produced anything. They've never produced anything. You, you can't give me criticism and call it constructive criticism if you've never been in construction. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot criticize me and call it constructive criticism if you've never been in construction. You ain't built nothing ever a day in your life. You've been like the, the grasshopper. You wanted to play all summer. You wanted to be outside all summer. I was out here grinding in the streets. You better watch how you talk to me. Because while you was out there outside all summer, I was grinding all summer. Because I know that one day night is going to come when no man can work. Y'all all right? He says, he says he prepares his food while it's hot outside. He prepares his food while the days are long. He prepares his food in the summer. And he gathers his provision in the harvest. Waiting for a harvest season for things we have not planned. Did y'all hear what I just said? We are waiting for a harvest season for something we have not even planted. Because we keep putting off. Now watch this. Let me let me let me bless somebody. And this is gonna set somebody free right here. We keep putting off the the, the summer season. We keep putting off the work. The longer we delay the work the longer we delay the harvest. We won't see the fruit from anything we don't produce. And that's, beloved, this is the, this is the payment for procrastination. Is the longer I wait to do something, the longer I wait to get started, the longer I, 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 I keep putting this thing off, the longer it's going to take for me to see the fruits of my labor. Because I can't see fruits of my labor. No labor has been done. We just like fruit. We, we, we want to go to the fruit stand instead of go to the field. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we we want to go to the pro, to the produce section instead of producing something for the section. Oh, God. Uh, we we, 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 we got we to gotta, we gotta do the work because if we don't do the work, we keep delaying the victory. Let me let me let me give it to you like this. This is point number four. The longer I delay, the further I get from my goal. 
the longer you delay, the further you get from your goal. If I say, okay, you know what, I'm going to be done. I, I, I want to get, I want to stop sinning like this. I want to, I want to be better than this. Yeah. What are we doing to produce a sinless lifestyle? I want to stop cursing so much. Or am I practicing not cursing so much? A a a am I, am I practicing, watch this, find somebody who don't curse. It, it, find somebody who does not curse. We go to the ant and observe his. Well, Y'all ain't saying nothing to me right through here. If, if I want to stop, if I want to stop smoking, uh, am I finding somebody who does not smoke, or am I always around people who pull out a Newport every five minutes and be like, "Hey man, you want one? <laughs> Don't mind if I do." Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all, I'm trying to get us to understand that we will never get to the place of success for whatever we're trying to be successful in if we keep putting it off for tomorrow, for procrastinate, tomorrow, procrastinating, labeling things for tomorrow. Tell your neighbor it has a due date. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It has a due date. I'm almost through. So he gathers his provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, lazy one? When will you arise from your sleep? Can I tell you this is the last point? I'm going to let you go. We're going to build on this as we go, prayerfully. The Lord says the same. How long? Will you lie down, you lazy one? Here's your last point. If we fail to get up and take action, we are accepting where we are. It's good enough. Did y'all hear what I just said? If we continue to lie down, sit down, waste time, procrastinate, put it on, put it on the back burner. I'll get, I'll get to it later. If we continue to do that, we are saying that we're satisfied with where we are right now. He says, how long will you lie down, you lazy one? He's saying, Solomon's saying to his son, do something about it. Can, 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 can you can we can we can we take a poll real quick? Raise your hand if you if you are satisfied where you are today. Nope, nobody, nobody. If you satisfied where you are in life right now, raise your hand. Okay. Solomon saying, do something about it. Do something about it. Raise your hand if you're not satisfied where you are today. I, I'm I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Because I could be worse than I am, but 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 if I'm going to be honest, I'm not close to where I want to be. How long will you lie down? How long will you sleep? A little sleep and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. A lot of us walk around like this all day long. And that's why our stomachs. Amen. I'm talking about mine. I ain't talking about yours. That's why our stomachs have, have, have begun to, to protrude a little bit because it gives me something to rest my, my, it gives me something to rest my arms on. Amen. Amen. Praise in my name of Jesus. Uh, can, can, I, can I preach it how I feel it? Yeah. I ain't talking about none of y'all. I'm talking about me. Uh, it, 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 makes, it makes a little bit more of a, of a cushion so my arms don't get tired of being folded because I'm already lazy. Say amen. Amen. Uh, 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 what I'm trying to tell you, beloved, is, is we got to unfold our hands uh, and we got to start working with our hands and redeeming the time because the time is right now. It has a due date on it. Uh, I've been waiting for too long uh, for my breakthrough. I'm not breaking any bad habits. I'm waiting for my breakthrough, but I'm not breaking no strongholds. I'm waiting for my breakthrough, but I'm not breaking into anything. How long? Will I sleep? 
Tell your neighbor, do something about it. Because if I never do, it will never come through. If I never do, D-O, it will never become do. I'm going to let you go right here. Let you go right here. Hope, trust, and pray that you've been blessed by the word on this morning. It's the altar call. It's prayer time. I, I, I can go a little bit further, but I, I'm a, I think we got the, the, the introductory of this message of this series is that it has a due date. There's a due date when everything that God has birthed or conceived in our spirit because he brought us here for a time such as this. But if God brought us here for a time such as this, he placed us all together in the, in the right now, what are we supposed to be doing right now? If we're finding ourselves stuck, we need to go to the end and consider its ways. As I remember the story as, I, as a little child talked about the grasshopper and the ant. The grasshopper wanted to play all summer long while the ant just kept his head down and kept working 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 because the summer got long and the summer was hot and the ant kept working and kept working and kept working and kept working and kept working. The grasshopper kept playing and kept playing and kept playing and kept procrastinating because he realized that he, he would be able to get it done in, 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 a, in a shorter amount of time than the ant was. But, but what happened is the season soon changed. Y'all remember the story? The season soon changed. And the grasshopper found himself not even being able to find food because winter had set in. And what happened was the grasshopper stalled during the winter and had to go to the ant and beg for food. Beloved, winter is coming. I don't want you to starve. Winter is coming, and I don't want us to starve. A famine is coming. I don't want you to starve. Will you start now? Will you start right now? Right now? Will you start right now? Will you start today? Summer is coming. It's the altar call. If there are some things in your life you need to let go of, will you start today? Will you start right now? It's the altar call. The doors of the church are open. They've been open for over 2,000 years. One day, God will shut the doors. And when God shuts the doors, no man, no man can open them. Are you here this morning and you have a need that the church can address? We want to pray with you and we want to, we want to pray for you. Right now, it's the altar call. It is the altar call. Be coming to Jesus. If you need to be saved this morning in the pardon of your sins, we want you to come to the Lord right now. We want you to come to the Lord right now. Do that right now. Do that right now. It's the altar call. I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. You need to know that Jesus hung, let and died on Calvary for our sins so that we might have life and that we might have life for eternity in heaven one day. Jesus died so that I might live. Jesus died so that I might live. Jesus put off going to the cross just just, just one or two days. He could have said, I, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Jesus could have said, I'll get to it tomorrow. But he didn't do that. He went right there. Because it was at its due date. The time was right now. Will you come to him for the pardon of your sins? Hear that, hear that Jesus humbled and died on Calvary for your sins. He died, he was buried, he rose again the third day. Will you believe that? Will you confess that he is the son of the living God? Repent and resolve in your mind that you want to stop doing the things that you've been doing and you want to stop wasting time? Be coming to him. We want to baptize you for the remission of your sins so you can rise and walk in newness of life. It is time. 
for you to come to him. The day you hear my voice, Jesus said, heart, not your heart. Do not boast about tomorrow, for do you for you do not know what a day may bring. What a day may bring. Come on, lift that hand right where you are. Lift that hand right where you are. Lift that hand right where you are. I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you on this morning. I want to pray with you, right? I want to pray with you and for you on this morning. Lift that hand, 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 lift that hand. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we call on you this hour as 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 humble but hopeful as we know how. Thank you, Father, for another day's journey. And we're glad about it. Realizing, God, that, Father, we have been wasting time, so much time. But you've been gracious to us. You keep giving us more and more time. And, God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you and adore you. With hands lifted right now in total surrender, God, we want to we want to be better than we've been in the days gone by. God, that, that, that invention that we have in our spirit, that book we want to write, Father God, the sin in our life that we want to eradicate and get rid of, God, we want to do it right now in Jesus' name. Give us the courage to do it now. Give us the hope to do it now. Give us the love to do it now. Give us the sound mind to do it now. God, when you do these things, because you can do all things but fail, we will be careful to give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. God, open up now my mouth, that my mouth will show forth, Father, a life that is worthy as I leave out of this place. Father God, allow the talk that, that I have each and every day, Father God, with every hand that is lifted, allow uh, everyone else's speech, Father God, to be a, a, a speech predicated upon the right now that we will take action and not delay. Father, we pray that we choose action and not delay. But Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus and we thank you that he didn't delay. But he went to the cross. He went to the cross in the right hand. Father, we love you. We praise and adore you. We ask you now to go with us this day and all the days of our lives. Forever keep us in the hollow of your hand. Forgive us of our sins. Bless those who need healing right now in the name of Jesus. Touch their bodies, Father God. Uh, 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 eradicate disease and sickness. Break every stronghold and every addiction. We love you now, God. Hear our cry, and please, God, do not pass us by. It's in the matchless, potent, and powerful name of Jesus we humbly pray. Let my Father's children shout and exclaim, Amen. Say Amen again. Say Amen again. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We now come into the God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. May the devil chase you every day of your life and may he never be fast enough to catch you. I love you. New Heights loves you. Most of all, God loves you. And it's nothing, absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Now may God make you fast enough that the enemy cannot catch you. Strong enough to overcome everything. Patient enough to wait on him. Wise enough to not fall for everything. And through the grace of God, May he elevate you to new heights. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place, same grace in the same space. Have a great week, everybody. Welcome to October and happy fall. Let's finish this year out strong. Peace, we out.